Hello and welcome to this video on multiples and the factors of a number. Now I dive straight into the definitions. Um, a fact of a number fact of a is num a number that goes into it a whole number of times. So if we took eight for example, we need numbers that go into it. Numbers that we can divide eight by and get a whole number. So for example, um, two is a fact of eight because two goes into eight a whole number of times without any remainder. We can divide eight by two and it gives us a whole number, four. What other factors of eight do we have? Well, one goes into eight. We could divide eight by one and it goes in a whole number of times, eight times. What other numbers can we divide eight by? We can divide eight by four because eight divided by four is two, that's a whole number. And we could divide it by itself. 8 divided by 8 is 1. 8 goes into 8 one whole time. And those are all the factors of 8. Now a multiple, meanwhile, is a number that it goes into a whole number of times. So 8 goes into what number? Well 8, for example, goes into 16. We can divide 16 by 8 to get a whole number. 8 itself is a multiple of 8 because 8 goes into 8. 8 divided by 8 is 1. Well, it could also be 24. 8 goes into 24. 24 divided by 8 is 3. And can you see effectively that multiples of 8 is going to be the 8 times table? So we could think of it as the 8 times table. So the next thing in the 8 times table, 32, is a multiple. And can you see there's going to be infinitely many multiples of 8? We could have like 800. 8 goes into 800. We could have 8,000. Now, the way I remember which way around it goes is that if I said you had multiple friends, I mean that you have like more than one friend. So you could think of multiples of 8 as kind of multiple copies of 8. We have multiple lots of 8. And that will give you a multiple of 8. Right, let's practice uh, finding the multiples and factors of these different numbers. So we've got the first one, 10. Let's find first the factors and numbers that go into it. What numbers go into 10? Well, let's start from 1 and work our way upwards. Does 1 go into 10? Yes, we can divide 10 by 1 to get a whole number. Uh, what about 2? Does 10 divide by 2? Yes, it does. It gives you 5. Does 10 divide by 3? No, it doesn't. 3 doesn't go into 10 a whole number of times. So that's not a factor. What about 4? Can we divide 10 by 4? Well, no, 4 doesn't go into 10 a whole number of times. We have a remainder. What about 5? Yes, you can divide 10 by 5 to get a whole number. Um, then 6? No. 7? No. 8? No. 9? No. 10? Yes. So once you get to the sort of the halfway point, halfway up to 10, you know there's not going to be any more factors up until you get to the number itself. What about multiples? We just want three multiples because there's infinitely many. We can't list all of them. Well, we could have one lot of 10. That would be 10. We could have two lots of 10. That'd be 20. We could have three lots of 10. That'd be 30. We can just think of numbers in the 10 times table. What about the next one? We've got 30. What are the factors? Well, if you think about it carefully, anything that goes into 10 is also going to go into 30 because 10 goes into 30. So we're going to have 1 again, we're going to have 2 again. What about 3 this time? Does 3 go into 30? Yes, it does, so that's a factor. What about 4? No, it's still not a factor. 4 doesn't go into 30 a whole number of times. 5 does. What about 6? Yes, 6 does go into 30. 7? No. 8? No. 9? No. What about 10? Yes. 11? No. 12? No. 13? No. 14? No. 15? Yes. 15 does go into 30. Now, because we're at the halfway mark, we can go up to the last number, which is 30. And then what about multiples? Well, we can just do the 30 times table. 30 times 1 is 30. 30 times 2 is 60. 30 times 3 is 90, etc. We could have had many other examples. Now, for the factors, I'm going to show you a slightly quicker way of getting the factors because most factors come in pairs. So if we take 24, sorry, I got these the wrong way around and we want the factors. Now notice that when you divide 24 by one, it gives you 24. So if one is a factor, 24 is also going to be a factor. So we could write these in pairs. We could think, well, one times what gives you 24 is 24. Now let's consider two. Well, two certainly goes into 24, but two times what gives you 24? Well, if you do 24 divided by 2, it gives you 12. So that means we know that 12 is also going to be a factor because we know that 12 goes into 24 two times. What about 3? Three? 3 goes into 24. So we think, well, 3 times what is 24? 
24 divided by 3 is equal to 8. So we know that 8 is going to be a factor. And then what about next? 4, 4 is 24 because it goes into 24. 4 times what is 24? Well, it's 6. 24 divided by 4 is 6. So we know that 6 is going to be a factor. And we, can you see that we're gradually meeting up in the middle? We're up to 4, we're kind of down to 6. And then we just need to try 5. That's the last number left to try. Well, 5 doesn't go into 24. And we know, therefore, we've found all our numbers. That's quite a neat little trick, isn't it? And then multiples, we just need the 24 times table. So 1 times 24 is 24. 2 times 24 is 48. 3 times 24 is 72, etc. What about the next one? 28. Well, let's use that same trick to find the factors. We find the factor pairs. Well, one certainly goes into 28. One's a factor of every whole number, but one times what is 28? Well, it's 28, so let's put that in our list. Let's hope we've got enough space. Um, what about the next one? Two, does two go into 28? Yes, because 28 is even. And two times what is 28? Well, it's 14, so let's put 14 there. Next, we try three. Does three go into 28? No, it doesn't. Uh, what about 4? Does 4 go into 28? Yes, it does. It goes in 7 times, so we can put the 4 and the 7. Now we try 5. 5 doesn't go into 28. 6 doesn't go into 28. And now we're up to 7, so we can see that we've got our complete list. And by the way, here's just a nice little property of 28 that you don't really need to know, but it's quite cool. If you add up these factors, 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 7 plus 14, and don't include the last factor, 28, those numbers actually add up to 28. Those factors add up to 28. And if that happens, we say that this number is a perfect number. So a perfect number is a number whose factors, excluding itself, add up to itself. So it's a perfect number. The first perfect number is 6, because the factors of 6 excluding itself are 1, 2, and 3. So there's and 1 plus 2 plus 3 is equal to 6. And then what about multiples? We just need a 28 times table. So we've got 28 times 1 is 28. 28 times 2 is 56. And 28 times 3 is 84. And then finally, we've got 100. So factors of 100. Let's use our little trick again. Well, 1 times 100 gives you 100. 2 goes into 100. So we've got 2 times 50. 3 doesn't go into 100. 4 does. 4 goes in 25 times. Uh, 5 goes into 100 20 times. Then 6 doesn't, 7 doesn't, 8 doesn't, 9 doesn't, but 10 does. And 10 times 10 gives you 10. So we've just got the 10 once, like that. And then multiples of 100, we just need the 100 times table. So we've got 1 times 100 is 100, 2 times 100 is 200, 3 times 100 is 300. There we go.